Back in the early 2000s, Tobey Maguire was a highly sought after actor and also one of the highest paid at the time. Although in just a few short years, his career took a disastrous tumble that landed him on the outskirts of Hollywood. Today on the channel, we'll be talking about exactly what led to the downfall of Tobey Maguire. But first, make sure to tap that like button to show some love to the channel. And with that out of the way, let's begin. To really understand where everything went wrong, let's start back at the beginning, shall we? Tobey's first credited on-screen role came at the age of 15 when he was featured as a character in the sitcom called First and Ten. For most of the 1990s, he picked up several smaller walk-on roles in TV shows with his first big starring role coming in 1992 with the short-lived sitcom called Great Scott. Although even with his great start to acting, Toby never believed that he could become a professional actor. Apparently during his childhood, he even entertained the idea of becoming a chef and even wanted to enroll in a home economics class as a sixth grader. Although his mother, who once had dreams of being a professional actor, offered Toby $100 to take a drama class instead. He ended up agreeing to this and in doing so, he decided to drop out of high school to continue acting. Thanks to some luck, talent, and his good boy appearance, Toby ended up booking a lot of roles. Which is actually one of the main reasons why he just isn't booking roles anymore in his older age. As time went on, Toby's baby face and softer voice began to lose its original charm. Boyish charm, I should add, that he leaned heavily on for films such as The Cider House Rules and eventually Spider-Man. The problem is that he never changed his acting style along with his own aging process. He was still attempting to depend on that boyish charm despite looking aged out. All that did was make it very difficult for audiences to connect with him and thus the decline Began. One of his childhood friends, Leonardo DiCaprio, is a good example of someone who was on the same path, but as he aged, he took on more gritty roles to overcome that boy next door casting call. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't say that he tried to take on different roles, but the reputation just didn't stick. In 1998, he starred alongside Johnny Depp and Benicio del Toro for the film Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, which is an absolutely wild movie about the life of Hunter S. Thompson, and you don't get grittier than that. Following this film, he displayed that he was capable of being a more universal actor, and in 2002, he landed his career-defining role when he was cast to play Peter Parker. With his intelligent demeanor, acting talent, and short stature, he was the perfect fit to bring the iconic character of Spider-Man to the big screen. With this movie coming out, Toby was solidified as an A-lister in Hollywood, and in the opening weekend, the movie brought in $110 million. So what do you do from there? Well, you sign a contract for two more sequels, because why not try and strike while the iron's hot? Although by 2007, when the third film rolled into theaters, his career Greer took a drastic nosedive. The third film was heavily relying on the success of the first two, with the second film being considered one of the greatest superhero movies of all time. Even the director Sam Raimi admitted to his shortcomings of Spider-Man 3. In 2014, during an interview with The Nerdist, he said, Each and every one of those Spider-Man movies were pretty damn challenging, working in that big budget arena where so much is at stake with much beloved characters that Stan Lee created, and people really hold them so dear to them that you don't want to mess up. And I messed up plenty with the third Spider-Man, so people hated me for years. They still hate me for it. It's a movie that just didn't work very well. I tried to make it work, but didn't really believe in all the characters, and so that can't be hidden from people who love Spider-Man. If a director doesn't love something, it's wrong of them to make it if so many other people love it. On top of that, Sony decided to scrap a potential fourth film because supposedly Sam Raimi couldn't get a script done on their timeline. That being said, all the blame shouldn't be put on Sam for the lack of work that Toby would get. One of the real reasons that Hollywood won't hire him is scandal. In 2011, his penchant for gambling got the better of him as he was tied up in a massive illegal poker club that allegedly involved the likes of Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, and DiCaprio. He was even sued for his involvement after it was revealed that the poker ringleader Bradley Ruderman had been using investor funds to play poker with. Toby ended up settling in 2013 to avoid further litigation, and then on top of it all, he was named in Molly Bloom's scathing memoir titled Molly's Game. In the book, Molly writes about Toby and says, Jamie and Toby were all in, and I wasn't sure which one I was rooting for. Jamie had almost lost his bankroll, and once he did, I wouldn't be able to let him play anymore. I liked Jamie. He was kind and generous. Toby was the worst tipper, the best player, and the absolute worst loser. But I had to worry about my job security if he lost. I held my breath and watched Diego turn over the cards. Toby won. Although it gets worse than just him being a sore loser or a poor tipper, he's actually a sore winner. Molly continues by saying he held a thousand dollar chip in his hand. He flipped it over a couple times in his fingers. This is yours, he said, holding it out. Thanks, Toby, I said, reaching my hand out. He yanked the chip back at the last second. If he said, if you do something to earn these thousand dollars. His voice was loud enough that some of the guys looked up to see what was happening. I laughed, trying not to show my nerves. What do I want you to do, he said, as if he were pondering. The whole table was watching us now. I know, he said. Get up on that desk and bark like a seal. I looked at him. His face was lit up like it was Christmas Eve. Bark like a seal who wants a fish, he said. I laughed again, stalling, hoping he would play the joke out by himself and leave. 
I'm not kidding, what's wrong? You too rich now? You won't bark for a thousand dollars? Wow, you must be really rich. These are just a few of these stories that damaged his reputation and since the release of Molly's Game, Toby has been pretty much blacklisted from Hollywood. With that though, let's check out some of your comments from the video titled Jake Paul Calls Out Conor McGregor. Mr. Flames Fan 12 says, if you actually think Jake has any sort of chance against Conor, you have no idea how fighting works. Most definitely. Not convinced, Granny says, Jake hasn't fought any pros. Let McGregor teach him a lesson. Uh, he will definitely be teaching him a lesson if this fight ends up happening. I mean, I kind of hope it does, because I kind of want Jake to be put in his place, but that's just me. Derek June says, Connor would break Jake's face with one punch. <laughs> you guys are really on Connor's side for this one, but I agree. I really agree. Even if there was a height and weight difference, I just think he's so much harder of a striker than Jake Paul is. Jake's been fighting with those gloves and Connor's just been doing it with mitts, so it's like, Connor's gonna win. If it happens, if it happens. JB says, knock on the devil's door long enough and someone will answer. Truer words have never been spoken. Or read out loud, I guess? Lord Haiti says, McGregor is a powerhouse in the boxing aspect of MMA. He has only lost his submissions, never lost by getting knocked out. Connor would absolutely destroy Jake. It's literally a joke that Jake even tries calling Connor out. Yeah, it is pretty much a joke, but it is Jake Paul. I mean, he's just fueled from controversy, so why not call out one of the best fighters in the world right now? I mean, it probably won't be long before he tries calling out Mike Tyson, too. Thank you so much for watching today's video, though. My name has been Johnny Rogers, and until next time, stay classy.